Humans are storytelling creatures, and as such, we as a species have looked for meaning in stories, narratives, mythologies. In this episode of our quest for meaning, I invite some of the finest storytellers here on YouTube. I hope you enjoy their response to the question of whether philosophy and stories can provide meaning to the modern person. Hey, I'm Hochelaga. I make videos about obscure topics, from the little book of cosmic horrors to the demon doodles of 1565. Many of my videos are about mythology, history and religion. It all stems from a love of story, and that's what I want to talk about today, how we humans use stories to make sense of our world. If you go back to the dawn of time, you'll find evidence of storytelling. Being able to spin a good yarn separates us from other animals. We're not sure why this is. Perhaps it's a way to cooperate in large groups. If we all believe in the same story, we can organize ourselves and work together. As our societies grew more complex, so too did our stories. With the advent of writing, we recorded them into books and sacred texts. They would inspire great monuments in their name, from the pyramids of Egypt to the cathedrals of Europe. This happened all over the world. Every culture had its own myth that could explain the environment around them. And then came the Enlightenment. The scientific revolution started to challenge these stories we'd so carefully crafted. Maybe the universe isn't 6,000 years old. Try 13 billion. Some held on to these ancient tales. Others latched on to new ones. Today, there is no one story we all live by. It's not a bad thing. We get to choose. From the founding myth of a nation to the legend of your favourite sports team. They give us something bigger than ourselves to believe in. It's almost like a form of religion. Maybe it is. Storytelling is a fundamental human trait, and we're still improvising as the narrative of our species unfolds. So, which stories do you live by? How do you make sense of your world? Why do read fiction tell stories and invent lies? The first answer is simple, to escape reality, to ease suffering. Inventing and telling stories is as innate as eating and breathing. There's a reason we love stories. Stories are mistakes other people made. We love to hear them because we don't want to repeat those mistakes. We enjoy great stories because they teach us something. The second reason as to why we invent fiction and tell stories is to get to a deeper truth about ourselves. To make sense of the world. Fiction allows us to understand the world, but most crucially, to understand ourselves. There is an even deeper issue here. We love stories because it's our way to fight our own mortality. We are the only species on earth that create and believe in fiction. Why? because we are probably the only species who is aware of its own death. It's through the art of storytelling that we fight back. Great novels are like great whiskey, a distilled form of truth, deeper emotional truth of the people and the culture it's distilled in. Great novelists spend years crafting their work, but their subconscious minds where the real magic happens are the product of hundreds, if not thousands of years of their culture, people, and language. This channel is dedicated to reading as well as craft of fiction and storytelling. I believe great novels are like timeless piece of art that remains with us for the rest of our lives. For me, fiction and storytelling is a form of freedom. It liberates you in the same way a clear path does in a tangled forest. That's our modern life. It's a tangled forest and stories help us to liberate ourselves from this tangle. Hello Seekers, my name is Sean and my project Mythos and Logos works to share mythological and religious stories from around the world, share the context and meanings to their original audience, as well as finding practical meanings that we can bring with us today. Regarding philosophy as a source of meaning, I would answer that philosophy cannot provide meaning to our lives, but it can help us find it. As usual, I'd like to explain with a story, this being a Buddhist one from China. There is an ox herd who is searching for a bull in fields. 
and he's out in nature and sees these fields of tall grasses blowing in the wind and flowers and rivers flowing, sounds of waterfalls and cicadas, crickets and birds. And he's wondering how anyone could ever find a bull surrounded by all of these distractions. But then along that search, he finds footprints. And as he's able to start tracking the bull, he gets a little bit closer, seeing it wandering through those fields, through the rivers. And eventually he does find this bull and is, has to use a whip and a leash to tame it, but then is actually able to capture and ride it. And that bull does not become tamed easily. But in time, riding on it, it becomes something that he can manage. And on this peaceful bull, he can discard the whip and discard the leash. And from the top of that bull, he's able to feel a bit more peace. Notice the beauty in those waterfalls and those rolling fields, the birds and cicadas and crickets around him. And when he comes home, in time, he's able to transcend the bull and doesn't even need that. And in even greater time, bringing this into his life, he's able to transcend that sense of himself. He's able to feel the source of that peace that he felt and go back into the world. I think that philosophy is not the bull, but philosophy can help you find its footprints. Thank you to all of the fantastic channels who have joined us for this collaboration. Thank you again to Eternalized, who has helped us put this collaboration together. If you'd like where I'm filming, check out Coast Studio. If you are a philosophy content creator here on YouTube, please email us to join this collaboration. And as always, keep seeking.